I'm James Wootton from the University of Basel, and this is my game Dikadoku Puzzles. I don't usually develop games, I usually develop quantum computers, which would be a new kind of computer full of quantum weirdness. And part of figuring out how to build a quantum computer is working out how to protect them from noise and clean them up when the errors happen. This is a puzzle we have to solve. We get clues about the errors that happen, and we have to work out what errors happened and how to clean them up. And I've made this into a couple of games for you to try, because these puzzles are not things that you need a PhD to solve, they're things that anyone can solve. Now you can do this on our iOS and Android apps. Uh, the, the games are designed mostly for those apps, but you can also use the browser versions as in this video. But the controls aren't so nice. So by figuring out the, how to solve these puzzles, you're doing research on quantum error correction, and you can help us build a quantum computer. In this video, I'm going to tell you how the game uh, Dikadoku Puzzles works, specifically the version called Z10. Basically, it's a grid of numbers. You can see them here. They're from um, 1 to 9. Either a square is empty or it's got a number in from 1 to 9. And there's a bunch of numbers everywhere. And there's a couple of question marks here and there. Now, these numbers aren't placed randomly. They're placed in groups relatively small groups that add up to a multiple of 10. So here you have C, a 7 and a 3, so that will probably be a group, a 6 and a 4, another 6 and a 4. Here a slightly bigger group, it's got three numbers, you've got a 2, a 2, and a 6, that adds up to 10, and so on. So basically we can go around uh, identifying these groups. So I can click on them to make them different colours while I'm working out how to uh, deal with them. But once you have something that you're pretty sure is a group that adds up to a multiple of 10, you can just move them together and get rid of them. Oops, random blue 2 over there, but we'll sort that out. So let's go through and identify some of the easy ones. Now what's the point of the game in the end? The point of the game in the end is to work out what's in these squares. So you can see here there's a 2 and a 1, and it's pretty far from any, anything else. So if we were right about all of those groups that we just identified, and for that 2 and 1 to be involved with that 7 over there, it would be a huge group because the distance between these are 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. So between the furthest but numbers in this group, there's uh, 6 steps. It would be a huge group. So most likely, there's a 7 here, which, uh, which pairs up with those two. So then everything over here just gets rid of each other. And we're left over here with a 1, so this is probably a 9, and we can cancel that out. And this is probably a 7, we can cancel that out. And we win, and that's basically it. Whether you're playing Digidoku or Digidoku Puzzles, whether you're playing Z10 or Phi Lambda, the methods that you come up with to solve these puzzles will help us to build quantum computers. So please tell us about them. One way to do that is through our survey, which you can see here. We are given a puzzle, which is particularly hard to solve for the uh, computer algorithms we currently use and you can tell us how you would solve it and what method, what answer, sorry, you would get. You can also devise your own methods to tell us about your your uh, algorithm. You can do a, a YouTube video, you can email us, you can go to our subreddit, uh, rdikadoku. Wherever your imagination takes you, you can use that to tell us about your method, to tell other people who are developing methods uh, about what you're doing and uh, have a community in which you are doing science. Uh, we hope you enjoy it and we look forward to seeing what you come up with.